Hello again, everyone. I have a special treat in the studio today. Right here, inside this DHL package, I have the Pinebook Pro 14-inch laptop. I can't wait to check this thing out. I don't really know anything about it. I had someone on Twitter recommend that I check this out and do a review. I looked at the price and I saw that it was very affordable, and I figured it would make for a very fun video. So here's how it's going to play out. In the first part of the video, I'm going to do an unboxing and I'll give you guys my first impressions. And then I'll spend about a week using this laptop and then I'll come back with my overall review. It'll all be in this one video. I'm not going to split it up into two different parts. I'm going to record the first half or the first portion and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to record the next portion. So let's go ahead and get started on unboxing this laptop. All right, so here it is. Let's go ahead and get this thing open and see what's inside. I'm going to use my handy dandy DHL package opening tool right here. All right, let's see what's inside. We have yet another bag. I think this one should be easy enough to just rip open. Let's see. Sure enough. I know so far this is probably not the most graceful unboxing, but you know what? I'm trying my best. Let's go ahead and get the rest of it open. Um, actually, first of all, right here we have the uh, power adapter. Go ahead and just rip that open here. And we have this power adapter right here. You can see the barrel connector for the laptop. And then I have the adapter, which I will need to use here in the United States. I'll go ahead and put that on. And there we go. I have assembled the power cord. Put that aside. All right, let's go ahead and get the box out of here. I'll put this aside. And we have the actual laptop itself. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this. And we had a bag within a bag. Now we have a box within a box. All right, so I hope there isn't another box in this box. Let's see. Get another one of these things here. All right, getting closer. So we have this little letter right here. Hold it up to the camera. Probably can't get it into frame. The text is a bit small here. So go ahead and get this out of here. And finally, we have the laptop in a bag, you know, the third bag so far. So first impression so far, I haven't even opened the lid yet. This has some decent weight to it. For some reason, I was expecting this to be very, very light. It is light. It's just a lot heavier than I thought it would be, which is actually a good thing. It feels pretty solid. It feels like it's aluminum, so I'll show you the bottom. You see the bottom of the laptop. So I can get it up closer here for you guys. You see the bottom, you can see the Pine 64 logo as well. Looks like we have a speaker here and a speaker here. And let's go ahead and get it open. All right, I'm going to attempt to zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to zoom into the keyboard first. And, you know, so far I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised. This actually looks like a really cool build quality here. And the keyboard has some decent uh, key travel, actually. So if I bring it up to the camera a bit. Sorry about this, guys. Trying my best. 
We're just going to press some random buttons here. It looks so far like a really solid build. Go ahead and center this. So I went with the US keyboard option. You have two options at least. And I went with the US keyboard. So, so far, if I was just going to press some random buttons here, I think this actually feels decent. But I'll give you guys my impressions of the keyboard as soon as I've had some time to spend with the machine. Now I'm going to reposition the camera and I will turn it on and you'll see the boot screen. So I'll be right back. All right, moment of truth. I'm going to go ahead and power this thing on and see what happens. Okay, so it's asking me to put in the username and password. And that information is provided on the letter that they put in the box. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. And I'll press enter. And here we are, we actually have the laptop started up. And now I'm going to switch over to a screen capture and I'll show you the default Linux installation that it comes with. All right, so we got this thing unboxed and I'm just itching to dive in. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Off camera, I just installed a screen recorder. I don't see an HDMI port unless I'm blind. So I can't do the usual thing where I plug in an HDMI cord and then do screen capture. So I installed a screen capture package on this laptop and I'm just going to go ahead and use that. So right now you should be able to see the screen of the laptop. You can see the default desktop. It says Pine64 there on the wallpaper. And then on the bottom right corner over here we have some information. We have a URL for their store, their forum, support, and so on. Now, first of all, this is using the Mate desktop environment. I was kind of expecting and even hoping that it would be KDE Plasma because I was just Googling around and another individual had one of these and mentioned that it was running Plasma. I don't, I don't know why or if, they, if that person got a different batch or something like that. I'm not quite sure, but this is the Mate desktop environment here. So I'll go ahead and open a file window right here we can see the default theme I actually do like this it's uh, you know got more of a bluish or purplish scheme to it I have recording lamps shining in my face so it's a little bit hard for me to see the colors but it does look like a decent theme and I also like how on the bottom right here you can see how fast the CPU is actually running so what I'm going to do is open up a terminal make the font size a bit bigger There, everything should be centered. So here we have a terminal window. And first of all, let's check the CPU info. So right here it says we have an ARM V8 processor. So if you were curious about the individual stats about this CPU, well, here you go. That's the CPU that was installed in this laptop. So what I'm going to do now is install HTOP. And it looks like that was already installed. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. But before I do, it's interesting. It's, it has all of these packages that it says were automatically installed and no longer required. The only change that I have made here is I installed the screen recorder. So I'm not sure why we see all those packages, those orphan packages. I guess it doesn't matter though. Let's go ahead and launch HTOP. And right here, it's showing that we have six cores. And that's actually pretty impressive, especially for this price point. Now, the CPU here, of course, is going to be a bit slower. 
than some. And of course I have the screen recorder taking quite a bit of CPU. You can see that right here. So it's going to be hard for me to give you like some idle shots of basically the laptop not running anything. It is running a screen recorder that is going to be a little taxing on the hardware. So ignoring that, I think it actually seems like it's running fairly decent. And a couple thoughts so far. I really like the touchpad. It's taking me a little bit of time to get used to it. Not that there's anything wrong with it. it it's just um, maybe I need to adjust the speed or something like that. It just seems like it's a little slow, but that's usually the default anyway. I haven't made any customizations yet. But the feel of the touchpad, though, is actually pretty cool. It um, has a really satisfying click when you press down on it. There's no physical buttons. You just basically press down on the corner, and that's how you do a left click or a right click. The keyboard is surprisingly good. I was reading another review from another individual and they were saying that the keyboard is the uh, weak part of this machine. I don't know if I agree with that. I will say it's definitely not the best keyboard I've ever used. Maybe it won't even make the top 10 laptop keyboard list if I ever had one, but it does seem decent. I actually enjoy typing on this thing. so. I have no complaints about the keyboard personally, at least not yet. I mean, I'm looking at the recording time and right now I'm at 24 minutes. I've had this laptop for 24 minutes, definitely not enough time for me to have any final opinions about anything, so I'm giving you guys my initial thoughts. Now back here on the laptop, let me go ahead and close out of here. All right, so go ahead and quit. And I'm kind of curious, what kernel do we have here? So you name dash R. We have 4.4, which is, you know, that's a bit old. But, you know, it is what it is. Let's see what distribution this is actually based on. And it's based on Debian Stretch, which is actually not the newest version of Debian. Now, I'm going to come back at you guys with more opinions on this laptop. I just need to spend more time with it to perform various tasks. I don't even know what the battery life is going to be because basically I've never plugged it in. The battery that I have right now, the how much battery was free, is basically how much battery I've had, you know, as soon as I took it out of the box. So I'm going to charge it up. I'll see how long the battery lasts. I'll browse the internet with this device, perform. Maybe I'll play some games on here. I don't know exactly yet what I'll do. I'm going to do some stuff. And then after about a week, I'll come back and then I'll transition into the second half of the video where I will tell you guys about my experience. So I'll be right back. So it's been about a week, basically about eight days now, since the Pinebook Pro arrived in my studio and I'm finally ready to give you guys the rest of this review. Now, before I get into my thoughts about this machine overall, I do wanna take a moment to talk about the hardware. Now, I feel like the build quality was a very pleasant surprise on this machine because for $199 US dollars, I kind of felt like it was going to suck. I mean, I've been to stores and I've seen laptops that cost about $200 and honestly, I've never been impressed. Now, we can't compare this machine to a ThinkPad or a Dell Latitude, an XPS, or even a Galago Pro from System76. Those are more expensive machines. We do need to adjust our expectations accordingly. That said, for $200, I don't recall ever seeing a laptop at this price point that had a build quality as good as this. It's actually a solid build. Now you might notice a few things here and there are somewhat cheap feeling, like the keyboard, for example. I'll get into that in a moment. And maybe even the trackpad. Now the chassis is very firm and there's not a lot of flex. I mean, there is some, but basically not nearly as much flex as I would find in your typical cheap laptop. And by cheap, I do mean by price point. And overall, it does feel like a very solid build, especially for the price point. The keyboard is something that, as I've mentioned in other reviews, is very important to me because I do a lot of typing. I write books and I do a lot of commands, I take a lot of notes, so I need a keyboard that can keep up with me. And I've read in another review that the keyboard was the worst part of this laptop. Now I'm starting to think that maybe whatever review I read was actually talking about a completely different machine, 
because the keyboard on this laptop is far from the worst. Now, it's not going to make my top 10 list or anything like that, but it is a good keyboard and I don't really have any problems typing on it at all. It does feel a little bit cheap, it feels a little bit hollow, but that's not really a problem. It's totally fine and I don't even notice it. It has great key travel. It actually has more key travel than the Galago Pro from System76. And although it may not be the best keyboard, it feels decent, so I can't complain there. The trackpad is, you know, decent. Again, not the best, but far from the worst. It doesn't have any physical buttons, but you basically press the bottom left or the bottom right corner, which will represent a left click and a right click. The buttons seem a bit firm to me. That's not necessarily a good thing. I kind of want the buttons to be easy to press. But these buttons, you know, you need to press a little more firmly than you might be used to on your typical trackpad to do a left or right click. Again, not a problem. It's just that if I'm at my desk, I'll probably use an external mouse. But if I am traveling or something like that, I don't really feel like I'm going to be that offended by using this trackpad. It'll get the job done, so it's not terrible. So surprisingly, in this $200 laptop, we have a 1080p IPS display, which actually looks very decent for this price point. It's not the brightest display in the world, though. It's actually somewhat on the dim side. But it's not so dim that I have any trouble seeing it. It's just that... Compared to most of my laptops, it just seems dimmer than the others. Now, the reason why I say most is because I also have a ThinkPad T480S, and that's a way more expensive laptop, especially when it came out. And that one also has a dim screen. Actually, I would probably rank the screens as identical in quality. So I guess you could say that this $200 laptop has a screen as good as a laptop that cost over a thousand dollars but then again I don't feel like the screen on a T480S is really worth bragging about. The colors are a little bit off at times. I notice some difference when I compare what I see on the laptop screen to what I see on the monitor where I do my recording. So if I'm using an external display or something like that I do see a difference but it's not bad at all. Actually, I think it's really good for $200, and when I use it, I really don't notice any difference. Now, when it comes to battery life, this machine will last you a little while. Now, I don't feel like it's going to last you, you know, as long as some of these laptops that advertise something crazy like 12 hours or something like that. I do feel you should have no problem getting over 5 or 6 hours. And then if you start turning down the display and things like that, you'll probably be able to stretch that out further. So it is possible to have an all-day charge. Again, it depends on what you're doing, what applications you have running, and, you know, again, how high you have the brightness. So it's really hard for me to give you guys a metric, but I do think that the battery life is actually pretty good. So at this point, we have a laptop that costs 200 U.S. dollars, and actually has really good build quality for that price point. So you might be thinking that I'm going to recommend that you run out and buy this machine right now. Now I'll admit, I do enjoy this laptop quite a bit. I've really enjoyed my time with it. It's fun to use. There's a lot of good things to say about it, but the problem is that it's not really for everyone and there are some rough edges that you should be made aware of. Now one thing I wanna mention real quick is that you can probably see right here, I have a USB-C dock plugged into this laptop, and then I have an HDMI cable, so I can actually record the screen directly from the computer itself. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that because what I want to do is talk about the software that it comes with. So what you're seeing is literally the same as what I'm seeing. This is a screen capture directly off the laptop using the USB-C port. You won't find an actual HDMI port on this laptop itself. You will need a dongle if you want to run an external display, just keep that in mind. So a lot of you will probably instantly recognize that what you are seeing is Manjaro. Yes, I'm running Manjaro on this machine. 
This is the ARM version. They make a version available that you can flash directly to the eMMC storage on this machine. And that's exactly what I've done. But I mentioned that I wanted to talk about the software that it comes with. And Manjaro is certainly not the Linux distribution that you will get by default if you were to purchase a Pinebook Pro. So why did I switch? So to be completely upfront with you guys and direct, the reason that I switched to Manjaro on this laptop is because the default Debian distribution that you get with this is just a pain to use. It's just not a good example of Debian. It comes with Debian Stable by default, and I do like Debian Stable. I think it's a great distribution, but they make some customizations, as they should, nothing wrong with that, but the changes are inconsistent. It doesn't even ask you to create your own user account. They create one for you. The default profile doesn't even you know, get applied to additional user accounts that you create. The Debian installation that it comes with just kind of seems rushed in my opinion. And to make matters worse, it's an old version of Debian Stable. Debian Stable suffers from a problem that most of the packages are very out of date. This doesn't really bother some people though. Some people like the added stability, but I just prefer to have newer applications. But the problem here is that it's running an older version of Debian Stable. But that's not even the worst part. I mean. There's worse things to use than Debian Stable, and Debian 9 instead of Debian 10, I mean, it could be worse. But it is, because wireless support on the default distribution that comes with this machine is shoddy at best. When I first turned on the machine and connected to Wi-Fi, it works no problem. I was able to open a web browser and, you know, do some browsing, so, so far so good. But the problem is, every two or three minutes, the wireless connection will just stop working. It'll still show that I'm connected to my access point, so it's not like the Wi-Fi card disappears or anything like that. It's just all of a sudden you can't get any traffic to go through. Now there is a utility you can use that will actually allow you to download the latest drivers for the software, and when I ran it, it actually fixed the problem wireless was fine. But the problem is, you run into a race condition because if the wireless basically dies in, in two or three minutes, you're basically hoping that the utility downloads all the drivers within that time, so you better be quick. Now another thing I did was I decided to reinstall the default distribution to see what that experience was like. And when I did that, the distribution basically could not connect to wireless at all, not even the initial configuration. It'll just keep asking for a password over and over again. If I check the logs, it's not that I typed the wrong password, I am typing the right password. It literally says that the reason for its inability to connect to the access point is none. That's exactly what the log says. So wireless with the default distribution is strange, especially considering when you download the Debian distribution that is claimed to be the factory image, wireless doesn't work. It does work out of the box, but it'll disconnect every few minutes. And that led me here to the ARM version of Manjaro, and I only installed this yesterday, and so far out of the box, the experience is much, much better. When you boot the laptop, you are asked to create a default user account. You have some options to customize it, and it's actually overall just a really user-friendly experience. And since it's not Debian stable, you get newer applications as well. Manjaro is a rolling release though, so if that's not your kind of thing, you probably might want to stick with the Debian distribution that it comes with after you, of course, install the drivers for the wireless card. So the default user experience is shoddy and not so great, but the laptop is saved from you know something like Manjaro. We can run other distributions on it, so if the default distribution isn't all that great, that doesn't rule this laptop out as a contender because you can just simply install something else. The only downside with adding a different distribution to this machine is that it's not as easy as it would be on x86. On x86, you simply just download an ISO, use something like Etcher to uh, flash it onto a flash drive, boot from it, and click the install button, and you're good to go. 
But for this, we need a custom version of any distribution that can run on ARM because that's the platform that this is. So we don't really have the ease of use that we would have with x86 when it comes to installing other distributions. Now I did create a video on my channel where I showed the process, but long story made short, what you have to do if you want to replace the distribution on the eMMC, which is the internal storage, you're going to need to boot from SD card first. And then once you do that, you can download an image file and then use something like DD to flash that onto the internal storage. It's not very beginner friendly, but I don't feel like this laptop is actually made for beginners either. Now it sounds really complicated and it kind of is, but it's really not all that bad. Once you get used to it, you could just check out the video that I already have on my channel and you'll see what that process actually looks like. So now the question is, do I recommend this laptop? Yes, I do, but it really depends on what the use case is. Why is it that you are wanting a $200 laptop like this one? Do you want to experiment with ARM or do you just want a cheap laptop? If all you want is a cheap laptop, then no, I don't recommend this one because you can buy a used Dell Latitude or ThinkPad or something like that on eBay for cheaper than $200, which will have twice the RAM, an SSD, an x86 processor, and it'll just outperform this computer basically all day long. So if all you want is a $200 laptop, no, not really. But then again, if you buy a laptop for less than $200 on eBay, you're buying an older model. And yes, it will outperform this one, but it's not a new computer, so you'd be dealing with a used one. It is actually going to be very difficult to find a $200 laptop new that runs Linux. I'm not aware of any others, but then let me know in the comments if there are any others. Now, if you like to tweak things or you are curious about the ARM platform, maybe you want to develop for it, maybe you might feel like ARM is going to take over the world and this is going to be your first vision into that, then yeah, absolutely, I do recommend the Pinebook Pro. Now, other use cases are maybe you just want a dedicated machine to do some DevOps work, you know, configure some servers, use a Linux shell, things like that. This will be great for that. It has only four gigabytes of RAM. So browsing might be a little hard. You can do it. The performance is still good, but four gigabytes of RAM is a hard limit to live with nowadays. But if you're just doing some, you know, scripting and some light browsing, I think you'll actually do pretty good. Another thing you can do is you can have a server. Maybe if you do home lab or something like that, I have a video about home lab as well then you can basically just have this be your ability to connect to that. Maybe you have something like X2Go or some equivalent remote desktop software. You have a powerful server that can do some you know, good processing, and then you just simply use this to connect to your server. It'll be great for that as well. And another thing it'll be great for is if you do any contracting work. This is very easy to take around with you to a client's location to get some work done, to connect to their network and configure their servers and things like that. So there's definitely a use case for this machine, but you have to approach it in the sense that it has to fit your use case for it to have actual value. The default user experience, like I mentioned, is a bit rough and you have to be comfortable flashing the internal storage with a distribution like Manjaro that'll work better. So overall, I do recommend this machine, but it's more of a soft recommendation. It has great hardware. The build quality is really cool. It's very geeky to have an ARM laptop and it's fun to work with, but just, you know, limit your expectations here and manage your expectations because depending on your use case, it may or may not be a good fit for you. Now, what I'm going to do now is continue to check out Manjaro and I'm going to think about doing a review of the Manjaro ARM version on this channel from this laptop. So this is certainly not the last time you will see this machine. You'll probably see it more actually because, you know, for taking notes and running through commands and rehearsing for videos, there's a lot of things that I can use this for. And I think I am actually going to continue using this for various purposes. So what are your opinions of the Pinebook Pro? Let me know in the comments below and then I'll see you in the next video.